Welcome everyone, this is L.A. Rathbone, and now we are starting a new Slackware series. Slackware Series 2, and this is how to use and configure Slackware. I'm a, little bit, I'm a little bit too excited about this one, because here's where I get to just mess around and do whatever I feel like doing. So we've installed Slackware, but I mean, the problem is, uh, there's really... There's really not an awful lot uh, we can do right now, because nothing's set up. Um, and uh, we got to make some changes here. So first things first, um, let's just make sure that we have internet connectivity because that's pretty important. So what we do is we run the, the if config command um, and I can see that my eth0 um, ethernet uh, connection has already been um, configured and that's because if we, if we, if we go into etcrc.d um, You'll note that we have uh, um, console colors. The green means that, by default, green means that um, the file is executable. So the inet1 is the one that, that ran um, to give us internet connectivity. So if we take a look at rc.inet1.conf, that's the configuration file for uh, the internet. I'm going to use the vim editor to take a look at it. And I like Vim better than the default VI that they have on there, which is Elvis. So I'm going to use it. You, you could create an alias to make VI take you to Vim or delete the symbolic link and change it around. But I'm just going to leave it as is with the Slackware defaults and just run Vim each time. I'm probably going to forget and type VI, um, but whatever. So you'll note that all the configuration files that come with Slackware are really nicely documented, which is really, really helpful because um, you do have to be able to poke around in um, uh, text files to configure your Slackware system. So in, in Vim or VI, uh, H takes you left, uh, L takes you right, J takes you down with your cursor, and K takes you up. You can also use the regular arrow keys, but using the, the H, J, K, and L is a lot faster because you don't have to remove your fingers from the home row. So I'm just going to use that. I'm just used to it. Um, the reason why it was auto-configured was because what they do is, this is part of the setup program in our installation, but use DHCP for our ETH0 device was set to yes. And since my card is just a standard Ethernet card, it's not a wireless that needs any drivers or anything, it was just able to give me the Internet. So if I quit that, colon Q, enter, um, that's really all we need to do with Vim for now. And I'm just going to make sure the internet does work. I'm going to use ping-c3google.com. If you didn't put the C3 in there, it would just ping until you killed it with control C. This is just going to ping Google three times. And we can see that it worked. We, we sent and received packets to uh, google.com. So we know we have the internet running. So that's a good uh, base thing to have. but. So if we take a look at uh, the kernel that we're running right now, we're running 3.2.29, which is the default that comes with Slackware 14.0. That's fine. But if we go to our boot directory, hit ls there, you'll note that vm linas is a symbolic link. And I think, I think when they put the at symbol at the end of files like that and highlight it in that kind of teal color, it means that it is um, a symbolic link. And let's take a look at what it's linked to. It's linked to the huge kernel. Now that's not something that we want to leave by default because the huge kernel has everything compiled into the kernel um, and does not leave anything as a module. And the problem with that is that if something goes wrong with one of your drivers, you can't just then go ahead and remove the module and add it back in. You have to, my understanding is you have to reboot the whole system, which is not ideal. But let's see why. Um, that setting is the way it is. If we look at lilo.conf, what they do is scroll down. Oh, I used VI, see? Vim. We can get some nice highlighting there. Um, there's lots of default settings here. I'm not going to worry about that. But if you scroll down, I'm just using page up and page down here. Here is where we configure our actual Linux partition. Our image, by default, takes you to boot VM Linux, and that is the huge kernel like we saw. So let's, let's go ahead and change that. That should be the first thing that we do when configuring our Slackware system. So let's, um, 
we need to relink the VM Linux to the generic 3.2.29 kernel. Again, most of you are going to want to link it to the SMP, um, but I'm, I'm running in a virtual machine. Um, PAE emulation is not enabled by default, um, so I'm not going to I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use the generic one. So I, I forget how to use the I forget how to link things. So I'm going to look the, at the man page for the ln command. Um, now I remember. Okay, I wasn't sure. I, I always forget if you have to do the, the link name first or the target name first. You do the target name first and then the link name. So what we want to do is ln. Let's let's look at our files again. ln s because we want to make a symbolic link and not a hard link. You almost never want to make a hard link ever when when using your system. It's just not generally done. And we want to vm linux dash generic 32.29 and our link is going to be VM Linux, and that will overwrite the old one. Ah, we can't do that because the file exists. So what we do is SF to force it. And now if we take a look at VM Linux, you see sometimes I forget things, right? We're not perfect. I forget commands sometimes. I forget different options. And, um, you know, this is why it's good to be able to know how to find the answer to, to your question if you don't know. So now we see that it's linked to the generic. But the problem is, because everything is loaded in as a module, or almost everything anyway, um, if we tried to just boot our system, reboot it now, we probably wouldn't have much luck because um, the, the module, for instance, for our file system type, ext4, may not be built into the kernel. It may be built in as a module. So if there's nothing telling Slackware, or the kernel, rather, to load in that module, then we won't be able to start our system. The way you get around that is by running an init rid or an initial RAM disk. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate how to do that. There's a command called make init rid that, that allows you to do that. Um, but it's a kind of a complicated command. It has lots of different options. Um, and uh, I'm sure there's documentation, including the man page, on how to create an initial RAM disk that's very customized to your needs. But 99% of the time, this is all you need to do. If you take a look at user share make init rid, we have a few files in there. And one of them is an executable called make init rid command generator.sh. Let's just take a look at that. I don't know if that's a standard thing. Yeah, it's created by the Slackware team, as you can see by the by the copyright information there. So it's a bit of a Slackware. Um, extra, but it's a very useful one. So let's run that command. Just type it in. User share, make init rid, make init rid command generator, hit enter, and it'll go ahead and tell us um, what command we should go ahead and use. And there it is. I'm just going to literally copy and paste that right into um, right into the, the console. So let's take a look at uh, um, our boot. We don't have a file called initrid.gz already, so we're not going to do we're not going to do ourselves any harm by simply using that command. So I'm going to you'll note that I've got my mouse moving around in the console now. If I can only get it to work, uh, it's being finicky because I'm on a virtual machine. There. Okay, I've copied it. Now I'm going to middle click to paste it, and I'm going to hit enter. Another way that you could run that command directly would be to run make init rid command generator, and then pipe it through the sh command or the bash command, which would then just run the resulting script, which is fine. But this, I prefer doing it this way because it's a little bit more interactive. Okay, so what they've gone ahead and done is created the initrid um, gz file. Let's take a look at it there. Just created to, on today's date. Um, and uh, let me see if we can use the mc command to take a look at what's inside. We can. So if you take a look at what's inside that gz file, it's kind of like a zip file. And it has various files here. You don't really have to worry about it, but oh never mind, you can't. Uh, 
I was just being silly there, actually. You can't, it's not a, it's not a folder that's been compressed. It's a file that's been compressed. So that, that, that's not going to work. Ignore that last little bit there. <laughs> just focus on the fact that we have an initrid.gz file ready to go. But it's not ready to go. We have to make a change. We have to go into our lilo.conf, which is um, our configuration file for, for the Linux loader. Oh, I did it again. Vim. And we need to make, we need to add initrid equals boot initrid.gz. Hit escape. Oh, and by the way, in order to edit in Vim, you can press the I key. That makes that turns you into puts you into insert mode. And that was how I then went ahead and uh, did that. Let, let me let me do that again actually to show you. So I'm gonna go to the end of this line here, hit the number sign, that takes you all the way to the end. You can because we're we're at the end, you should use A instead of I. That'll take you ahead of the cursor. Press A and then now press enter to go to the next line. Just hit space twice, init rid, space slash boot slash initrid.gz hit escape to go back to regular mode where we can move around the cursor again colon w that saves the file and q quits the file at the same time so now we've uh, updated our lilo.conf file now we have to run lilo which is located in sbin so let's run that command and um, I don't really know what that warning means, to be honest. It always does it. I just I would just ignore that. So we now have updated our system so that we can have an init read and not just a huge kernel. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is reboot the machine and meet you back here. All right, we're back. Um, so I rebooted my machine, and you can see that I've logged back in as root once again. And we're now running um, in the generic kernel. And now uh, lsmod, you'll see that there's a bunch of modules running now. Um, whereas beforehand, everything would have been built into the kernel for the most part. And our ext4 module was loaded nicely by um, the, the initrid process. And as well, rather than having um, everything built into the kernel, the udev program went ahead and loaded our modules for us automatically. So we've got our Slackware system configured to use a proper kernel now so that we're not using using the, her, the huge kernel. And um, to be honest, that's really all the time I have for this episode. I've, I've only got about a minute and 50 seconds left on my timer, so there's not a lot else I can get accomplished in that period of time. So in the next episode, we'll con continue to configure our system and get some things uh, up and running, switched around, and so forth. So we'll definitely want to be getting our email running. We'll want to get uh, see if we can browse some websites and, and just do some simple things like that in the next episode. So for now, I will be signing off. This is L.A. Rathbone here saying cheers and uh, good night and good luck. Take care.